Hi and welcome to session 3 on indices. So far we have looked at what is the meaning of indices and how to use powers and then we have looked at a few rules or a couple of rules the rule of addition of powers when the base is same and the numbers are being multiplied and the rule of subtraction of powers when the base is same and the numbers are being divided. Uh, at the end of last session we kind of got into that any number raised to 0 is equal to 1. So that is our next rule that n raised to 0, n could be anything that whenever a number is raised to 0, whenever the power is 0, the result is going to be 1. So n raised to 0 is 1, uh, 2 raised to 0 is 1, 3 raised to 0 is 1, 101 raised to 0 is also 1, right? So any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. That means a number is not there and in product a number not being there can be replaced as 1, right? We looked at this proof earlier or, or how to basically get to this idea of a number raised to being 0, 1. So say you have 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 3, right? So you have 3 3's in the numerator and 3 3's in the denominator. Uh, all of them get cancelled, you are left with 1, right? So, so the result of this calculation is 1 and you also know 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 3 according to the rule number 2 should be 3 raised to 3 minus 3 which is 3 raised to 0, right? So from this you can connect that 3 raised to 0 is 1. You can run the same proof for any number, right? So any number raised to 0 will give you 1. Let's try one more example uh, and from the example we come to the law uh, and the, the law regarding negative indices. So the example is that uh, say in the numerator there is 3 raised to 3 and in the denominator there is 3 raised to 5 or 3 raised to 3 is being divided by 3 raised to 5. What is going to happen? Right? This is different because the number of 3's in the numerator is lower than the number of 3's in the denominator. So there are 3 3's in the numerator and there are 5 3's in the and there are 5 3's in the denominator. So the 3 3's from top and 3 3's from the bottom will get cancelled and you will be left with 3 into 3, right? Or a 3 square in the denominator. If I use the formula 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 5 is going to be 3 raised to 3 minus 5, right? The formula of A minus B. So 3 minus 5 is going to give me minus 2. So if I use the formula, I get the result as 3 raised to minus 2 on the right hand side. On the left hand side, I can see that it is 1 which is in the numerator and 2 3 is in the denominator or 3 square in the denominator. So I can see that 3 raised to minus 2 is nothing but 1 upon 3 square, right? So I hope you're getting the basic idea and that is going to be our next law or the next rule. The rule being that say a number n is raised to a power p and the power is in the negative, say n raised to minus p. It is the same as saying 1 upon n raised to p. Uh, and the proof of it is in, is in the previous example. 3 raised to 3 divided by 3 raised to 5 gives you 3 raised to 2 in the denominator or 3 raised to minus 2 according to the formula, right? So, so say, because it's a new idea maybe, so say we uh, take a few more examples. 5 raised to minus 3, what does it mean? It means 1 upon 5 raised to 3. Another way of looking at it quickly is 1, if you remember, can be rewritten as 5 raised to 0. 1 can be re rewritten as any number raised to 0, right? So in this case, let me rewrite or rethink of it as 5 raised to 0. And then it becomes 5 raised to 0 divided by 5 raised to 3. That means 5 raised to 0 minus 3 using, all, using our law number 2, which means 5 raised to minus 3, right? So more examples like that. Uh, practice this idea. 7 raised to minus 5 is equal to 1 upon 7 raised to 5. Once again, same idea, instead of 1, you can think of it as 7 raised to 0. So 7 raised to 0 divided by 7 raised to 5 gives you 7 raised to 0 minus 5, which means 7 raised to minus 5, right? Or the negative indice. Okay, moving towards the last law or the last basic idea of how to use indices. Say you have 7 raised to 5 inside of the bracket and a power of 3 outside. So what would happen in this case? So a very common idea in mathematics is, is the use of symbols or abstraction to make your life easy. So instead of 7 raised to 5, can I replace it with a symbol? Let me call it y, let's say, okay? 
So instead of 7 raised to 5, I will write y. Now my thought is very clear, right? This is nothing but y raised to 3, right? Or it means y into y into y. So let me rewrite it like that. y raised to 3 means y into y into y. And I know what y is. I know what y is hiding, what y is referring to. y is referring to 7 raised to 5. That means y into y into y becomes 7 raised to 5 into 7 raised to 5 into 7 raised to 5. Or 7 raised to 5 plus 5 plus 5. Or 7 raised to 5 into 3. Right? So when you have a number raised to a power inside of a bracket and another power outside, in that case you multiply the powers. Right? So 7 raised to 5 inside of the bracket raised to power of 3 becomes 7 raised to 5 into 3. The general form would be n raised to a raised to b is equal to n raised to a into b. You should try a few more examples like this. So say you have 3 raised to 5 raised to 7. That is simply 3 raised to 5 into 7. 7 raised to 9 Again raised to 9, 7 raised to 9 into 9, 7 raised to 81. Okay, the last law being when there are two different bases, say n and m, right? And both of them are inside a bracket and raised to a. My result is going to be n raised to a into m raised to a. How do we come to that result? Let's try it out with an example. Say you have 2 into 3 raised to the power of 5. So instead of 2 into 3, can I put a symbol of Q or P or Z or something there? So it becomes Z into Z into Z 5 times. That means 2 into 3, 2 into 3, 2 into 3, 2 into 3, 5 times. Right? So I'll write it out like that. And then I will separate out the 2s and 3s. So I see how many 2s are there. There are 5 2s. And how many 3s are there. There are 5 3s. Right? So finally I get the idea that it is nothing but the same as 2 raised to 5 into 3 raised to 5 right so what we are trying to do is not only cover the laws but we are trying to get to the idea that if you understand the very basic definition of something the laws and the formulas more often than not you can derive for yourself and see very clearly how they are operating or what is the basic principle involved right so this covers the basics of indices and the rules and formulas of indices in the next coming video we'll try out a few problems. Okay. Thank you and see you soon.